How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Uh, a few days ago, last week, we went. Uh, I went diving with my friend Race after school. I just I rushed home, packed up my stuff, and I met him out at one of my zones that usually produces some fish, and it was nice and calm that day. So we decided to send it. And every time I go with Race, something crazy happens. Uh, I think the last time I went with him, we were out at some really far zone really deep zone and I had a Kahala come right up to me we got some action and we took a jet ski in like we've had uh, asked these guys on jet skis to pull us into shore and it was crazy and then the time before that I shot a PV Uku and then we got almost got swept out to California but whenever I'm with this guy he al we always do some crazy stuff and so I met him at this spot and we got on some action and I want to show you guys the footage that I did get and then you'll see why, but I have a lot of stuff to show you that I didn't get on camera. And um, I hope you guys enjoy that as well. And remember, if you enjoy this video, hit like, hit subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And I'll see you guys in the water. Shoots, everybody. All right, guys. So first drop, we pulled up on this really nice looking zone and had a lot of good structure around. And whenever there's a lot of flat grounds and then all of a sudden there's structure, usually that's where a lot of fish are going to be hanging out. And this was definitely the case for this spot um this is a specific spot that i kind of landmarked and every time i go to um this zone it, there's always life and there's always fish around it's just a matter of whether or not you can get them so i'm taking this drop as you can see when i was as you could see when i was dropping everything around this spot is just flat but then right here, there's a bunch of rocks, there's a bunch of holes, places where fish can hide. And that's always where the fish are going to be congregated. So if you can find zones like this, that's usually where the fish are going to be. If you're, especially if you're in a desert, like the, just the flats and there's no structure around, this is where the fish are going to be hanging out. So I'm just on the bottom dusting and grunting. And you know, there's all kinds of fish around. And all of a sudden this big school of Omilu starts coming in. And none of them were super huge. Um, you know, they were all kind of like pan fry size. But this isn't even the entire school. As you can see, there's more coming in from the back there. And this Omilu school is almost always at this spot. Sometimes there's less, sometimes there's more, and sometimes they're dumber. Um, sometimes they're smart and they won't let you get close. But today, they were not super smart but they were really really skittish like any little bit of movement that you made would set them off and they would like dart around being super fast and it was really hard to like pick one out and like see if he was even good size because you'd be looking at him and then the next second he's gone he's behind you or something so it was really hard to kind of like get a lock on any of these fish but they were coming in really close so on this drop i threw a flasher and that's you can see the omilus are kind of circling around that little gap in the rocks it's because i threw a flasher and it sunk and it fell into the the rocks there which isn't ideal um you kind of want the flasher to still be visible but um you know it is what it is it brought them in and it got them curious but as soon as i started making my drop all of the omilus got scared again uh but i knew they would still be around because they were just hanging out in this area the entire time so I picked the flasher up and I started waving it in the air, trying to get the light to reflect off it in a way that would bring the Omilus back again. Because on the surface, when I was looking at them, it's a lot easier to tell like their sizes and how big they were. And I started to notice that like a lot of them, or not a lot, but a good amount of them were four pounds and up. It's just that it's hard for me to tell in the water when they're moving so quickly and there's so many of them. Um, so. I decided like this time I'm gonna try and like take my time, pick one out that's big enough. So I'm waving the flasher, trying to get them to come in, and pretty soon they start to come. You can kind of see them right there. And they're coming in, and these are all the small ones. The small ones come in first. And then after the big ones start to filter in, but once again, I could, I just could not tell which ones were the big ones. And it's just because they were moving so quickly, like as you can see how quickly they're darting around. But I picked one that I thought was a good size and I shot him. And he got tangled up and I forgot that I set my drag super tight for Florida. So I couldn't pull my gun up with me to the surface. And actually while we were getting 
um, while I was waiting to make my second drop to pick this fish up, we saw a big kahala. We got distracted by that for a while. And when I finally got back to my omilu, he had been eaten up by a bunch of hages. So as you can see, there's a big hole. That's not from the shot. That's just from hages trying to rip apart his wound and eat his guts. But good size omilu. Good pan fry size. Definitely was not the one of the bigger ones that I saw. Um, but like I said, it was just impossible. Like I couldn't. I couldn't track any of them like any sort of movement that i made it would set them off and they would like dart all around me they would go behind me they would surround me and it was just really really hard for me to actually pick one out to shoot but so this was the first fish of the day and we were seeing a bunch of life around like a lot of moves and a lot of um not a lot but a couple big ukus race actually shot a good size like a two three pounder but that was about it. So here I saw these opelukalas that were pretty big. This was a lot later on. Um, we weren't really shooting anything else. And so I line up on this opelukala, but I don't really have a shot there. And then I get a shot, perfect broadside shot. So I took it. And this was one of the bigger ones that was in that school that was just there. And these fish taste pretty mean. So I was pretty happy with it, but that's all the footage I got. All right, guys, we just got out of the water. As you can see, it's dark, but we came back, got some, <laughs> we got a crazy koi right here. We got Race's monster Hilu, blue one too. Never seen one like that. His Uku and then his Omilu right here, solid one. And then I got the small-ish Mu that I shot, good size on. And then I got the <laughs> Opelukala and then solid little Omilu. I got eaten by some hoggies uh, while we saw the, we were trying to shoot the Kahala. And then look at these Veke Nonos, bro. Ooh, look at these Vekes. Oh my God. Look at these things. Jeez, and then I, not one, but two. Oh Alright guys, so once again, I just want to apologize. Really, I'm truly sorry that I wasn't able to get these fish on camera to show you guys. Um, I'm sorry that I don't have footage to offer for these fish. I mean, they're literally like the best fish of the dive and I don't have any footage of it. And I'm super sorry for that. Um, my camera died shortly after I shot the Opelukala and I shot these right at the end of the dive, like all of within a span of half an hour maybe. Um, so I'm really sorry about that. And uh, I'm just gonna go through the fish right now because like I'm super stoked on these fish even though I didn't get them on footage. Um, I mean, I've never shot Vec and Onos before and they're they're massive. Uh, so I was super, super stoked on these fish and I just wanted to talk to you guys about them and share the moment with you guys. Uh, because even though I don't have footage, I still wanna you know tell you the story of how I shot these fish and I hope you guys enjoy that and I hope you'll forgive me for uh, not getting them on camera. But yeah, I'm just gonna get into them one by one, tell you what happened, what was going through my head, how I shot it. And yeah, I hope that's enough of a substitute. I'm really, once again, really, really sorry that I can't, uh, I don't have any footage to show you guys, but I do wanna talk about these fish and I do wanna tell you guys the story of what happened. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Sorry, I didn't, I don't have any video, uh, but yeah, I'm just gonna get into them right now, and um, I hope you guys find this uh, entertaining. All right guys, sorry, it's a little bit noisy out here. It's kind of windy, and I'm sitting underneath my banana tree, so um, whenever the wind blows through, it's kind of loud. So I hope you guys can hear me okay. So I'm just gonna go through the fish one by one, and first up, I shot this moo right after the Opelukala. I was just cruising around looking for fish, and I dropped down on a bit of structure because I knew there were moves in the area and I was just scratching, dusting, you know, doing my thing and I look up and this guy is like sitting right in front of me and he's just chilling there, he's not scared and so I take a little lunge, I shoot him 
right in the guts, <laughs> unfortunately. But good thing he didn't rip off. He just runs into a hole. And so I go back up to the surface because I couldn't pull him out. Uh, I didn't have enough air left. And so I go back up, breathe up again, and I drop back down. And as soon as I look into the hole that this guy is in, I see a big old puhi just staring at my moo. And as soon as he sees me, he lunges for my moo. He grabs a hold of his head, bites him across the eyes like this. You can't really see any bite marks or anything, but bites him on the head. And so I just grab my shooting line and I've wrestled with the eel a little bit, yanked the moo out of his mouth, and I secured this good sized moo. Probably like a two, two and a half pounder. So not huge, but good size one. Definitely stoked on it. It's gonna taste mean. Perfect size to eat. So good size moo. And then right after that, I shot the big, the bigger of the two Veke Nonos. Look at this thing, man. Can't get over it. I've never landed a Veke Nono. I shot one before and then he ripped off, but I've never landed one. And God, this thing is, one, it's beautiful. Like the, the reds on it, especially in the water after I shot it, was beautiful. Um, but it's, I mean, it's freaking massive, man. Super stoked on this fish. Uh, super lucky that I ran into these guys. So I was swimming around. I went out into a little bit deeper water, um, probably in the 60s, 50s, 60s. And I shot this this big guy because um, I seen a school of them on the bottom just chilling. And so I start taking my drop and I'm on my way down and I turn around, like I turn my body around to look at these guys and they're not even scared. Like usually when you take a drop and you're right over a fish, they get scared and they start swimming away. But these guys were just hanging out underneath me. Like they didn't even care that I was there. I could have dive bombed them, but I didn't want to because it's a very, uh, I'm not very good at it. Um, so I just went all the way down to the bottom and as soon as I hit the bottom, I look up and they're just swarming me. Like a school of them about this size and some maybe even a little bigger were just swarming me like the Omilus but that I showed earlier in the video, but they were a lot more calm and they were just cruising, checking me out. And so I line up on one of the bigger ones, which was this guy and I shot him and he was so close I was able to put the shot, you can see there his gill plate's all messed up. Put the shot right there and it came out somewhere in his mouth. And I landed my first Veke Nono. And what a first, I mean, really, yeah, fly. But um, yeah, so stoked on this fish. Super lucky that I was able to find them even. And they don't even look like this underwater. They look more like brown and, um, almost like a normal Vecca, just a little darker. But yeah, there's just a school of them and just seeing them swarm me like that and they were all big. Um, it was really, really cool to see. And I, I sh like I said, I wish I could have shown you guys, but huh, man, didn't get it on camera. Next time I go to that spot and I find this school, I will get it on camera, I promise. But yeah, sorry about that guys, but still super stoked on this fish. Awesome, man. All right, so right after that, I dropped down on the same spot and I strung this guy up just on my shooting line because I got a nice shot through his gill plate. So I was able to put him in a way that he wasn't affecting my aim at all. And so, and I wanted to shoot another one cause I knew the school was around. So I, I dropped back down and on this little ledge right where I shot this one. And I look up, I'm grunting, I'm dusting. I'm not really seeing the Veke Nonos. I'm seeing some big moose hanging out in the back. And I was kind of just waiting to see if they would come in and all of a sudden in the distance I see two yellow spots and they're coming in and the bigger of the two was this one and oh you can see I got him right in the eye because he swam right up to me like literally right up to me and I just right to the end of my gun and I was just grunting grunting and he came in and I shot him through the gill here and then it came out through his eye. So I had this one and the Vecchi, the big Vecchi Nono on my stringer or on my shooting line at the same time. So crazy, man. I, I'm super, just super stoked on this dive, man. Like two Vecchi Nonos, the Moo and this yellow spot. 
I was so, so stoked. Me and Race were just freaking out. So really awesome, really awesome dive. So really nice size yellow spot. Not much to it. I mean, I was just, you know, I took a drop to shoot the Vecinonos. I grunted and dusted. And after a while, this, this guy came in with his partner and I picked out the bigger one and got a nice shot in the gills. So solid fish. And then finally, right before we were about to head in, I saw the Vecchia Nono School again. And I dropped down on the same spot, like in the same area within 20 feet of where I shot the yellow spot on the, Vecchia, the first Vecchia Nono. And I shot this guy because the school came back. Um, I, was on the, I was on the deeper part of the ledge. So I was off the ledge in the sand, in the sand channel and um these guys were just two of them were just hanging out there was a bunch of smaller ones around but i was focused on the, this one and his partner and uh he came just close enough they were a little skittish after i shot the the first one but yeah i got this nice one shot him in the guts because he was a little bit far away but really nice fish Twin Vecchinonos. Look at this man. Insane dive. Freaking crazy man. Absolutely insane. One of the best shore dives of my life. Super epic. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. That's kind of what I would have said if I had it on camera and I was doing my voiceover or whatever. But unfortunately, like I didn't get video and I'm super sorry about that. Um, but I'm gonna go back to the spot, hopefully try and shoot some more Vecchia Nonos and give you guys an idea of what these guys were like. Um, the yellow spot was kind of just random and the moo, I mean, moos are always there. It's just a matter of whether or not they're curious enough to come in. And you guys have seen me shoot moose. You guys have seen me shoot yellow spot. Although this is the first time I shot a yellow spot while on the bottom. So maybe I can get that too. But the Vecchinonos, I will get you guys footage of me shooting some big old Vecchinonos again. Hopefully soon, um, but we'll see. But next time I will be prepared and I will get these on camera. Super sorry that I wasn't able to film these for you. Um, but next time, uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that commentary. Hope it was a good substitute for not actually having anything on footage, but sorry about that guys. And uh, I guess we'll just move on to the rest of the video. Alright guys, I'm at my friend Micah's house and he's gonna do a Gyotaku for me of the Vecchinonos. And this is one that he did from our last dive. He's the one that we took with me and Hunter to go quale diving and I shot a bunch of Roy's and he made this out of the haul that we got. And now he's gonna work on the Vecchinonos in there and then the yellow spot too. So it's gonna come out sick.
کشور Alright guys, that is it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Once again, I'm really sorry that I didn't get um, the yellow spot Mu and the two Vekes on camera. Um, the camera died before the end of the dive and unfortunately I wasn't able to film any of those fish. Um, so I was really bummed about that. I'm sorry I couldn't show you guys, but you know, it is what it is. Super soaked on the fish regardless. Those are my first two Veke Ulas or Veke Nonos ever. And um, they were pretty, pretty big. So I was super excited about them and the yellow spot and the moo were awesome as well. Um, so I hope you guys appreciated the commentary that I was able to give you. Um, I know it's not the same as having actual footage, but uh, I really wanted to just still share the moment with you guys, tell you guys the story about how I shot the the, the Vekes and the yellow spot and all of that. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Once again, so sorry I didn't get it on camera, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, next time, next time I go to this spot, I will shoot some Vekin Nonos and I will get it on camera, I promise you guys. But until then, I will see you guys in the next one. Shoot to everybody.